packets should contain the full set of slides that I'm going to be using today. Um, so you have them for reference and for marking. And on the bottom of some of the slides, you'll find website references as well. Um, it's my contention that the goal of user interface design is to create uh, systems whose where, where the user's cognitive experience is that the system is comprehensible, that it's predictable, and controllable. I find those three very general, high-level terms extremely useful in shaping my thinking. Comprehensible, does this particular user understand what they're going to, what they're seeing? Okay? Uh, and I have to think about the different communities of users. Will children, will elders, will professionals, will novices comprehend what they see? And then, is it predictable? Will they know what happens when they click or fill in a form or press return? Will they have a mental image, a mental model of what will occur after they've done their action? I think that's really critical because it makes them feel comfortable to try things. If they're unsure, if it's so complex that they don't know what's going to happen next, they will literally, you'll see it physically backing away from the use of the system. And the third basic principle is controllable. They are in charge. Now, this is a hot issue, and as I have mentioned, this is our controversy for today. Do we, for the first hour, do we uh, expect that systems will give the user control, or do we want to see the computer more in control? the software being adaptive and carrying out activities very much beyond what the user's expectations might be. It's a delicate and complex issue and we'll address components of that soon. But it's my contention that predictable and controllable are the guides to successful systems. The affective reaction for users should be a sense of mastery. They know what they're doing. They feel in control. They may not know everything and every button and every dialog box, but the parts they use, they understand and they have a sense of mastery, of replicability, that they can do it again. And if they get in trouble, they can help themselves out. You'll see today during my live demos how <laughs> the, the points at which I'm struggling and where I'm not in charge. And those parts make me anxious and they make users anxious when they don't know what's going to happen. I think if they have a sense of mastery, if it's suitable for the task that they're accomplishing, they'll have a sense of satisfaction. And I think that's our goal as designers, not to make ourselves satisfied, but to make the users satisfied users of their system, that they have a sense of accomplishment at the end of the day. Not that some magical computer did the job for them, but that they themselves succeeded in doing it. Not that their car took them to work, but that they drove themselves. So that sense of control leads, I think, to the sense of satisfaction and accomplishment. And that leads to the higher goal of a sense of responsibility. What air traffic controller would use a system which was unpredictable or uncontrollable? They would not, because responsibility is central in their training and in their professional, their professional sense of themselves. But I think most users want also that sense of responsibility which is tied to their sense of, ac of, of accomplishment. And so that's the response that I want users to have. Now, unfortunately, too many current systems lead to confusion, because they're incomprehensible, frustration, because they're unpredictable, and remorse, because they can't get what they want. The error messages, the struggles, the incompatible file formats, the unpredictable operations, the surprising twists and turns, the cluttered, chaotic screens, those are all too often part of the environments that I see and that I think we could do much better. And as I said in my introduction to this program on the, on the announcement, it's time to get angry. It's time to get angry about the quality of user interfaces. It's not that user interfaces are getting worse, but user expectations are growing dramatically and rapidly as the community of users broadens in a way that's amazing and wonderful, and that the level of tasks or the breadth of tasks that people are attempting to accomplish with computers increases. So people have expectations that when they sign on the web, they should be able to search and find something. And yet, the frustration and remorse is strong, as reported by you know, the newspaper columnists, 
but also by the surveys of users. So even though we have seen progress, I think as a community, as a profession, uh, and as users and customers, I think we should be more angry about the quality of what we're getting and the expectation we have should be still higher. Okay? And I hope in these few hours to present some ways to think about improving the quality of interfaces um, and methods which will also support that process. Now, the themes that I cover that are in some ways a table of contents of the book are the input devices and strategies and we're seeing opportunities and improvements there, moving from keyboards to pointing devices, and the latest discussion about voice, and we'll take a look at some of those devices next hour. Um, but from my point of view, the major direction is still direct manipulation, a visual representation of the world of action. The screen is a remarkable place to see lots of information and be able to rapidly select it and see the results of such selections. Uh, I think those operations can be increasingly rich and generate high degrees of automaticity that are still predictable. Now, as you know, this, as we'll see, this is still a controversial topic. Output devices and formats are probably still the greatest opportunity for research and improvement. When I see the quality of display of information, I find it rather shallow. When I see three or four windows on a screen with 30 or 40 icons, I'm not impressed anymore. That's sort of where we were, uh, you know, 1984, and we're stuck in the valley of 1984. I think we could have expectations as experienced users to be able to manipulate dozens of windows at a time and see thousands of objects on the screen in a comprehensible and orderly way. And I hope to show you some of those during this hour. So I think that's the greatest opportunity for improvement, and that will be my argument during the third hour. I think also the manuals, tutorials, and training mechanisms and software are other important topics that uh, need to be addressed. Of course, we all have the hope and belief that we'll build such a beautiful system that we won't need any training materials, but the reality of complex environments is that training tutorials and assistance are, will be an important part of those designs. And I think there's multiple levels of them. Online help and tutorials are fine, all the way down to personal human help is, should be accessible uh, in, in every technological uh, situation. Okay, how do we get there? Well, over my 20 years of my professional career, I have persistently, <laughs> uh, persistently advocated this scientific approach uh, to get beyond user-friendly, a term that grates on my nerves, um, and we don't want friendly.